Hello and welcome to another episode of the BTS Creative Academy podcast. Uh, we're on a roll, it would seem. Uh, today we have another guest, uh, Lily Gray. Uh, Lily is an author. Um, this will be the first guest that I'll be um, having a conversation with who I don't know. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to uh, meeting Lily uh, via Zoom. She's in North Carolina in the United States and I'm here in Essex in the United Kingdom. So um, let's see how this conversation goes. Is it actually working now? Yeah, it's working now. Whoa! Oh. Yay! <laughs> I wonder what happened there. Yeah. Zoom is just weird sometimes. Yeah. But anyway, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Lily. So Lily, Lily Gray, author. Yes. Yes. Seems uh, to be author, yeah. Seems to be author. Just finish your first draft of your book. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Just finished a couple weeks ago. Okay, cool. So yeah, mm -hmm. I've been I've been watching your progress on on TikTok. It's a really cool way to to share your journey like that. Um, TikTok's really great for that. Yeah. I mean, you can have any video just like randomly blow up, which is kind of annoying because a lot of videos don't in that way. But when you have one do, it really helps. And what kind of inspired you to share your journey like that with writing? Because writing is quite a solo, solitary thing to do. Um, so what kind of inspired you to kind of share the, the progress? Well, there was two reasons. One, when I wrote my book, I was on a road trip with my family for a month and a half out west. OK. Um, so that's part of what started me writing because I was bored for several hours during the day during driving. Um, the second one is that's how you have to market when you're self-publishing is if you don't do something social media like, you're not going to sell copies because no one's going to know you wrote a book. No one's going to come across it, are they? In, exactly. In this, in this current so, market. It's the you know, product is so diluted with actual public, like traditionally published books and not traditionally published books that were well marketed. Is there, is there any other self-publishers out there that have kind of inspired you and kind of shown you the way? Or is yes. this all off your own back? Um, well, there's several um, on Instagram. One, I've actually met one and made friends with um, Carly Hargraves. She's really sweet. She's just published her, um, she's publishing her third book and I've read her series. Um, really good. Um, let me see what the other person's name. Uh, I can't. One of the first people I followed see it is bookish heartbreak she she made an entire series on how to self-publish and so that's how I like was like oh this is actually a possible thing to do mm -hmm. without like spending thousands of dollars which that's I thought that was the thing with self-publishing is you could do it but you have to be rich to do it was yeah, my we're, we're living in quite an, a, an amazing age where we're able to do this we can now yeah. write a book and we can put it out there into the world and share it with everyone we don't have to necessarily go for a gatekeeper anymore to share yes. it with the world and uh, that's amazing yeah I, I see that as a blessing I do hear from people though that some maybe older people from an older generation they don't like the new way of things that the things are going um but how, yeah. Do, yeah, how do you feel about it um I feel like it just opens more opportunities for people who don't have the ability to take all the time to query an agent or they really just want to get their book out there soon because some people spend years like I know I've heard of someone on TikTok who's been seven years simply querying agents, and a lot of people at that point give up on the book even if they love the book to start writing a new one and I know if I had to like give up on the book I'm currently writing to start a new one I probably would not write anymore because I'm a very like motivation's got to keep going like a landslide kind of thing. Is there a reason I behind that? Is there a reason behind that, that the, the motivation you need that to keep to keep moving forward? ADHD. ADHD. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but tell if me something about stops, that. If something stops me, I kind of just like, nope, not worth it anymore. Not going to do it. I give up. I mean, I'll come back to it in a few months. But like, it's a very like, if the dopamine's not there, you know, the happy chemical, then I'm just, it's not fun to me. Okay. Um, which is why I write one page every day to keep that motivation going, like keep that excitement in the book. So have you have you found a structure then of a way to keep moving this forward? Is there like a daily routine that you have? Yes, I don't care when I write or if I write in one burst or throughout the day, I just have to write one page a day and then I'm happy, which is a very small goal because I usually write more than one page. But I set myself up for success by giving myself such a small 
benchmark hit. And then by hitting that, I'm like, yay, I achieved my goal for today and I've done it. So how did you um how did you discover you had ADHD? Is it just as something that you've lived with all your life and it runs in the family and I showed symptoms of it very early on. <laughs> and then I continued to. Which and then I did research. I ADHD. I my I wanted to learn about mental illness in general and mental health because I wanted to be a psychiatrist for a while. So I realized it took like eight years. Um, but then I just learned about it because I find it interesting, and so I learned a lot of symptoms of ADHD and how to work with it, and that's helped me a lot by figuring out how my brain works. So is that uh, would you say it's a weakness or a strength? I it's both. Just like an someone who doesn't have ADHD it's a weakness and strength like I said I wrote a book in 30 days because mm -hmm. my I really wanted to fe finish it and it was giving me a lot of dopamine so I was able to do it really quickly but it does make it so like I peter out on things um I don't have it as bad as other people do I can stay I can make myself stay focused without medication um but I would say it's both it depends on the situation so I have something not not quite the same as ADHD I'm, I'm dyslexic I'm dyslexic um, too dyslexic as well oh, yeah that's and very fun with writing it, it is yeah so i i've i've tried to write i've um i've wrote a few plays theatrical plays oh that's awesome um, and produced and put them on and i've tried to i've tried to write a book but it's a, a, a being dyslexic it is a it is a yeah. struggle um, yeah, and it is it's a, a hurdle to get over mm, I, I would even say more of a, more of a mounting <laughs> yeah to, to especially climb. it's just like I feel like mentally we're as well stopping ourselves like we can't do this like it's not going to happen I just mm -hmm. not going to be able to write a book that's readable was the mental hurdle I had to get over and yeah. I forced myself to stop and pay for grammar really premium not sponsored um <laughs> and I wrote a book and I did I've learned something called a trash draft which is the first draft where you're just writing the story and you don't care about the grammar and that changed the game for me I before when I've tried to write books which I've wanted to be an author forever I would give up halfway because I would go back and edit and edit which stopped my progress of actually writing the book um but once I learned hey just don't worry about that you can worry about that later I got the book out and now it's done which is amazing and yeah they, that yeah it's, a, it's amazing once you've if you've got such a hurdle or a mountain to climb once you get to the top of that that mountain yeah and you've achieved that that progress and then yeah and then you can go back you can edit you can change things you can get the spelling Which is something right, i had right. to remind myself over mm. and over again you can change it later you can fix it later you don't have to go and read it now in fact i didn't write a, over a single page twice in my book because right. i knew if i did i would mess myself up by thinking yeah. oh this is terrible the grammar itself doesn't work like that sentence doesn't work i i would know what i meant later and i I, I saw one of your TikTok posts and really related to it, actually, one where I saw saw that you said about you being dyslexic and that, that process that you go through and the, the listening back as well, the, yeah. the playing back of it is really helpful. Oh, that was that, amazing. Because the voice in your head when you're dyslexic can still... It skips over the grammar, mm. like the bad grammar and stuff. I just don't hear it, which is yeah. the main problem with it. Yeah, I can exactly. often I often have the problem in just an email. I'll send an yeah. email to someone and I can and then you overthink that one email over yeah. and over again because <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll read it like five or six times and I'll be like that's absolutely fine I'll send it yeah and then 10 minutes later I'll get an email back what are you going on about what are yeah. you, why are you even saying it why are you saying it like that yeah is, is the other issue as well and it'll be like oh and then and then I'll play it back or I'll get someone else to read it back to me and I'll be like oh that's not what I meant at all so when yeah, you're trying exactly. to do something creative, it's like it auto corrects in your brain, but not on the paper. Yes, yeah, <laughs> our brains are an amazing thing, aren't they? <laughs> it is. There are sometimes not fun to work around, but you know they do their thing. They work. But, and you know what I find amazing? How you've got these things like ADHD and dyslexia, but yet you're choosing to do something which you could easily say, "I'm going to." I'm not going to do this. I'm not capable yeah. of doing this. You're choosing to do something that's that's hard work. Why do yeah. you think that is? Well, since apparently since I was like just starting to talk, I was telling stories and that's my passion. And if I fail, I fail. But I want to write. My goal is to write a book. I don't care if anyone buys it, really. I just want to have it out there and have like my friends and family be able to read my story maybe give it to someone and have a stranger read my story. Just like having my story in the world 
is such a motivating thing to me that I don't, I expected the book to take a year. I planned on one page a day and around 300 pages. So one page a day, you know, you can do the math, I'm sure. Um, but it ended up being a lot more because I had a lot of free time. And I was like, you know what? I don't care if I even get it published. I'm just enjoying telling the story for myself. That's really nice. That's a really nice outlook to have on the process as well, that you're doing yeah. it for yourself. Yeah. I hope to make a career out of it, but it's, hmm. It very, it's very hard to make money as an author nowadays. You know, the market's so saturated that most of the time authors have to have two jobs, you know, writing and another career, which, you know, maybe I'll hit that million dollar like post that goes viral and I'm the next uh, fourth wing books or Hunger Games, you know, but it's all luck, really. Like if a big post happens and tons of people buy your book and then love it, you know. So how would you feel? if it didn't work out in that way, if you didn't, if you wasn't successful, you're writing these books and let, let's, let's look at the negative. Yeah. Potentially negative. So how would you feel if it doesn't, doesn't move forward? That I think nobody that's does really... where I've set myself up first. Like that's what I expect. So it's not going to be a big thing. Like I do not expect to get more than like two people a year to buy my book. If that, and those are friends is what I expect. Um, how, do, how, so does the, how does the process? The process of writing? Yeah. Yeah. So you're writing, but you're not doing it for anyone. You're not getting any monetary gain. How does that feel right now? I think it's like a release of like, I've had this story in my head, like vaguely, it, the story has changed shape over years, you know, but I've had this story in my head forever. And it's like a release to finally like, okay, it's on to get it out. I can, yeah, I can start thinking about other things because it, once I start writing my book, that's literally all I wrote about. I had dreams about this book. Wow. It was 24 seven, which is how ADHD works. The hyper fixation. Mm -hmm. um, so 24 seven, I thought about this book and I'm still thinking about this book. I recently hired an editor, um, but it's going to take three to six months for that to that process to get through the waiting list. Um, she's amazing. She's currently building a clientele. And so her prices are very low. I would like to actually shout her out because she's of amazing. Um, on TikTok, she is novel narrator editor slash author that's her name wonderful make sure you send me the details and we'll put it yeah on the, i'll send on the you pages. that she's amazing she's currently trying to build a clientele which if you're an author who is trying to self-publish i highly suggest finding someone who i mean the editing might not be as good as like a thousand dollar editor but someone who just graduated and is trying to build a clientele because their prices are going to be more affordable to what you might be able to do and you'll still have someone else look over your you know your project even if it's not someone who's been in the industry for years yeah so it's really good to have someone that's that's separate to your your creative idea as well to review it yeah exactly just have a different point of view streamline it yeah no that's that's amazing then you really seem you seem to be really pushing forward with this this dream and this vision where do you think that comes from the my passion for writing yeah that's i feel like stories are just such an important thing in the human experience which that might sound weird but like I was always we've begging been people to tell me stories it, we've been telling stories since the beginning of time haven't we as yeah cavemen. exactly a few years yeah, yeah so a few years yeah <laughs> um but I would beg people to tell me stories because I was homeschooled as well I had a lot of free time um okay. I've been homeschooled my entire life I've never went to public school um mm -hmm. which is fun. not everyone in my family agreed because I have a lot of teachers in my family mm -hmm. um but I would be like bored only child for a couple of years and begging to tell stories and for people to tell me stories. And I don't care if they were real life or not. I got my mom to tell me tons of stories about her childhood. And then after, once I would start to be able to articulate my words enough and my little sister was born, I didn't care that she couldn't understand my stories. I started telling her stories because I was like, oh, I wanted stories to kids. This toddler, this like four month old definitely wants me to tell her stories. Yeah, stories uh, are are amazing, aren't they? And amazing. They are. to, that's really nice to hear that. So your has your mum been an influence in this storytelling as well then? Oh yeah, definitely. This is not a book she will read, uh, simply because she doesn't like thrillers or gore, which is fine. I've decided that I'll put sticky notes on the pages she doesn't want to read so she can still, you know, read it. <laughs> <laughs> and also like gore. Because it's a it's a thriller, like new adult book kind of more for something but yeah she's been super supportive she's gotten she's paying for grammarly premium for me that's 30 bucks that's hard. um and she kind of has this thing where she 
doesn't choose her kid's career. I have an older sister too, who's my half sister, but she kind of like gets a sense of what we're going to do. Like when she was little, my mom was like, you really like doing your friend's hair. You're definitely going to be a hairstylist when you're older. My sister is a hairstylist, hopefully opening a hair salon in the next couple of years. Um, she always is like, you're, I think you're going to be an author. It's okay if you're not an author, but like, that's just what I'm getting from you to be an author. And just like someone saying, yeah, you could be an author. That enough was like, yeah. That's enough I of a little could. push. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Even if it wasn't like, a, you are going to be an author, it could be like, yeah, you could be an author. You tell good stories. Mm -hmm. I'm a parent myself. And I kind of do, do that same kind of philosophy of my children that if I can see them going in a direction, I, I'm not going to force them down that road. But if I can give them a little nudge, be, be that, that might be it to yeah. get them on their passion exactly yeah i think that's a really uh, nice way to to help people find their path yeah exactly especially like the outside perspective like she could see from my outside perspective that i was obsessed with storytelling mm. so tell me a little bit about the the book the book itself because okay. you started to touch on it a little bit there it's a thriller yeah yeah, yeah tell me tell me more so, then to s sell the book to me all right so it's about a girl named Molly who on New Year's is found out by her very strict religious parents that she is gay. She and her girlfriend are seen. And the book takes place a couple months after that during the end of the school year. Um, her parents decide that to fix her, that they're going to send her to a knockoff wilderness survival program. And I'm not sure if you're aware of the, what those are, because I think that's a more American thing. These are these... Um, therapy programs but they're very abusive they take children out into the woods for months no contact with their parents other than letters that are scanned and edited by the camp leaders no, I've, and, I've heard but yeah so we don't yeah. in the uk we don't have anything like that good. No, i'm aware of that i'm aware of here if there they're was. starting to get outlawed which is good but mm -hmm. some states still allow them and they're terrible practices i'm this was another hyper fixation to learn about these things mm -hmm. um anyway it's based off that and her parents think oh uh this is a wilderness route program. And when Molly gets there in Alaska, um, turns out a group of rich serial killers have decided that they this is how they're going to get their group of people together this year. And every year they get a group of people together to hunt down for sport. Um, and so they let them go into the woods. They have five minutes to run and then they start chasing after them. And Molly has to figure out how to get out of this these woods and hopefully save as many of the other survivors as possible. Well, it sounds it sounds intense yeah it's kind of like how i like to write mm -hmm. tell me, tell, like me stuff. tell me about molly what type of character is is molly molly doesn't really expect to be alive at the end of the summer in the book um after being you know found out for being gay her community kind of shunned her her girlfriend said oh i never dated her i just like she kissed me um uh, so like she got all the heat off her everything was put on her and she just didn't expect to be still there at the end of the summer. Um, she's a very, she's a fun character. She likes, she's a very friendly person, just no, doesn't have any really friends anymore at the beginning of the book. But then at, she meets her friend um, Brody, who was a childhood friend who's back in town because she he used to um, visit every summer with his aunt and uncle. And so that brings a little bit of, you know, hope to her. Brady gets sent off because he as well is not having very good, relationship with his parents he's like why don't we just like leave like you're turning 18 in a couple of months we could just go she's 17 in the book okay which normally so, i would prefer to write an adult character um because mm -hmm. i don't particularly like putting kids through these scenarios but to make it work legally she couldn't be sent unless she was a minor so this has been kind of inspired by kind of like this this real life thing that's going on over in your country yeah um but is there, is there anything more that's inspired this story? Um, a couple things. During my road trip, we had a friend with us um, for half of it, which was super fun. And she had a school project where she had to read a bunch of books about surviving in the woods. So like Hatchet. And as a, someone who's homeschooled, I didn't have to read the mandatory. Reading, so I'd never read Hatchet. I was like, I'll give it a try. And I really liked the survival aspect of it. And I really liked Hunger Games at the time, too, which I still like Hunger Games. It's one of my favorite books. Very well written. Um, and so I was like, the best part of the Hunger Games for me was the first book when she was in the arena because it was kind of like it was kind of like fighting, but she also had to survive. So I was like, what if I could just like draw that out? And instead of like everyone against each other, all the kids were being hunted by a group of people and they kind of had a, you know, they didn't have to hurt each other, you know, and there was a survival aspect too. Well, wow, that's a really nice way that you've you've found that through you found this story through being together with your friends and your family. 
and yeah, uh, yeah and it's and it started off this this book and this journey but it's um do you mind if I ask you you you're quite you're you're how old are you I'm 18 I just 18. 18 spring. Yeah. That's that's amazing to have finished the first draft of a book by 18 and to have such goals and insight into what it is you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Uh, would you do you have any sort of words of wisdom for other people your age that are thinking about writing and they've got these ideas yeah. for a book, these stories that they want to tell, but they're, you know, they they keep holding back or they do a little bit and then they stop. What would you say to someone like that? You're going to write a couple books that you give up on i wrote several don't worry about that or let that discourage you because eventually you're going to finish a book um and each time you write a book and you stop you get better um at the beginning of my book it's not as good as the end of my book because i spent hours of writing and learning every moment you're getting better at writing but just write it doesn't matter if you plan on publishing it if you want to publish one day you need to write to do that and maybe you'll come across an idea and be like i don't like how i wrote it this time but i can rewrite it and do it again later or you know right after so I would just suggest write. I mean, don't expect anything from it because, and traditionally publishers aren't going to publish someone who's underage. They're not going to publish someone like me who just wrote this my first book ever that I've completed. So if you want to publish, I'd suggest asking your parents for help with self-publishing, but you just have to do it. To write, you have to write. So that's the message, just do it. So I took writing right. prompts from online and just wrote short stories. That was a really good practice and fun. Okay. So what would you, where would you find these writing prompts? Well, um, I use um, character AI and I just say writing prompt and it's random. Okay. That's, that's yeah. a really, really good idea. I think there's some Google, uh, you can probably just look up writing prompts on Google too and mm -hmm. some will pop up, like a, a generator. You can okay. also look them up on Pinterest and they have like, they're everywhere. <laughs> no, I like, yeah, I like that as an idea. And so you just write li little bits little stories every now and then and eventually that hopefully will lead to something bigger you yeah. need to just just get into that routine of just writing yeah exactly and you need to learn how an idea is made I made a video on this on my TikTok how an idea is made is there's nothing original anymore and that was something I had to overcome like oh this sounds too much like this book or this sounds like too much like this book but that's like that's a good thing when self-publishing because you have to relate your book to other books that people might have read. So they're like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I like that book. Maybe I'll like this book. What is it they and, say? There's only seven stories, isn't there? There's Yeah, something like that. story structures. And and so all story, you know, Harry Potter, um, yeah. Hunger School Games. of Magic type thing. Yeah, they're all the hero's journey. Yeah, um, exactly. Hmm. Um, so in a way that I make my um, ideas as I take two ideas or more and I just smash them together so wow. for mine it was wilderness survival uh serial killers wilderness smash them together and brought that idea together which is three simple ideas and then I formed it into a story and do you use a do you use a particular structure or is this following like the hero's journey it, what what kind of structure I think I have just follow? a vague idea of the hero's journey in my head so mm -hmm. I kind of already keep because it's been to told that. it's been told so many exactly. times that you kind of you feel you it kind of get you? an idea of it. Mm -hmm. Well, but what I use is the three act structure. Um, it's a very basic one, but it's good if you're writing for the first time. It's you have the first act, which is home. You know, this is where everything's kind of okay or teetering on the edge of like falling. Right. Then you have the second act, which will be the longest of your acts, um, fifty percent of your book, and that is during the entire journey of like things kind of hit the fan learning how it does starting to overcome it and then the third act is overcoming whatever it is and either not making it or making it well, when you put it like that it it, it almost sounds so simple doesn't yeah. it <laughs> it's a it's very uh i'm not saying it is i'm not saying no, it yeah is it simple. does sound I, simple yeah and in fact it is kind of simple like just plot out a book is simple like it's mostly like making sure that you stay within the word. Like, I don't know how to currently word count it. Like my first book, the beginning arc was five chapters, I think, or something like that. I probably could have made that three chapters, but it needed to be five chapters. Maybe I'll take off the first chapter. I'm not sure. I'll see what my editor has to say, but it's figuring out how to do that within a certain number crunch because I wanted no more than like 100 words. I mean, 320 pages. So it was like, how do I fit that in there? You know? So, uh, so, so we kind of got an idea of, of where you've come from with this. And you, you, you were saying that you were homeschooled. 
do you do your education from being at home has been enough um to to lead you on this path yeah. or have you still got more to learn I definitely still have more to learn and I'll probably I don't think I'm going to go to a full-on college at the moment that's not the plan mm -hmm. I'll probably take some college classes but I feel like as someone who didn't have to go and sit in a chair for how many hours every day and you know be forced like you're just to be shoved information down my throat to memorize not to really learn it does take a little bit different approach to homeschool because kids don't want to learn and they think that's my parent I don't have to listen to you you know versus mm -hmm. a authority figure who's different but mm -hmm. I got the time that I wouldn't have in school to do my little stories and to play outside all the time with my little sister those are some of the best memories like years and years of like playing outside with my sister which has spurred this like love for the outdoors and my knowledge that I have put into my book on like different edible plants and like how to survive in the woods because I got super hyper focused on that for a while as well when I was a kid <laughs> um I just feel like having that time to be a kid now I can tap into that child like storytelling that you know part of me very mm -hmm. easily because I still have that I still go outside and play <laughs> That's that's really really important that you that you do hold on to that moving forward even even as you continue to learn and develop that you keep that play mentality yeah that's something that within what I do that I try to echo as much as possible remember that play yeah let's let's take it back to play um, that's even with this podcast um, I've got a friend in a couple of weeks joining me on this podcast and a li little bit nervous uh, about joining me. And I said to him, just treat it like you're coming around to play podcast. <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, I've, I've lost the audio again. The audio's disappeared. Can you hear me? Can you still, I don't, oh. oh, there we go. Oh, perfect. Oh. Yeah, sometimes so, I, I, I miss that and I just have to turn it on. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, where do we get to? Yeah, so but play. Yeah. Play, play is, is really important. And, and as we become adults, we, it kind of, we stop doing it. Well, we're told to stop doing that is the problem is, no, you need to start working. You need to make money or that you had that you're done. Mm -hmm. You got your like couple of years of it kind of. Yeah. And then you're an adult now. You're not supposed to do that. But no, we still want to have fun. It's just a different kind of, of having fun, you know, like. Well, it's, it's almost like if we can tame the play, it's structured play. Exactly. Uh, and, and that play can be used to do something really important and contribute in a really important way, like telling some important stories. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And writing my book has not felt like work. It's felt like play. And I feel like that's our big part. That's wonderful. So um, I think our Zoom session is coming towards an end. Um, before it does, um, I would, uh, I'd like to catch up with you again. Um, yeah. Once you're maybe in a couple of weeks or, or months time, once your books, once that, that edit's finished. Yeah, I'll let you know once uh, it's about to come out. Yeah, and keep keep sharing your, your posts with me. Keep keep, yeah. keep keeping me up to date. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Um, and I wish you all the best with it. And it, it sounds amazing. Thank you so amazing. much for having me today. This was That's, very fun. Yeah, no, thank you for getting in contact with me as well. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this and talking about my book and hearing from you that you as well have dyslexia. It's nice meeting someone who has dyslexia and understands mm -hmm. the experience. That's wonderful. But um, yeah, I'll send you the information for all the TikTok and stuff. <laughs> That's great. Thank you ever so much, Lily. I'll speak to you soon. You Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Well, that was Lily Gray, author. I appreciate you joining me today, Lily, and I appreciate everyone out there who is listening. Uh, thank you for joining us on that Zoom conversation. There's a few technical glitches, um, but it was uh, uh, very insightful for me as someone who's uh, tried writing over the years, successfully and unsuccessfully. Um, I definitely haven't successfully finished the first draft of the book, that's for sure. So I am very impressed with Lily's accomplishments, um, and I look forward to seeing what happens to her in the near future once her book is published. I'll be sharing her link uh, with this podcast if anyone wishes to give her a follow on TikTok and all the associated links which she mentioned within the podcast as well. I do hope you'll return to listen to another episode very soon. Thank you.